Dear students, we have already discussed something about malaria, the fever caused by plasmodium. I think so you have understood what were the facts I just normally described in the last classes. Now we have to know further about malaria. How to prevent the development of malaria fever in human beings? What are the strategies? What are the methods adapted? One of the methods adapted in preventing the malaria to break the transmission cycle. There is a mode of transmission should be broken. It's called a chain of transmission. The chain of transmission should be broken. So, to break the transmission cycle, how? By killing the insect vector. Because it's being spread by what we have the definite host, the mosquito, the female anaphylis mosquito. By killing that one, we can prevent the transmission of the disease. Then how to prevent or how to kill the mosquito, either the larva or the adult. Number one, spray oil on the surface of water. You know, the mosquitoes lay eggs, particularly in water. The larvae hatch and develop in water. When they are coming to the surface for breathing, if you are spraying the oil on the surface of water, it forms a thin film of layer, preventing the breathing of what is called the larvae or pupae. So, making the larvae or pupae impossible to breathe because they have to reach the surface or what is called breathing, we are making a layer of what is called the oil that prevents the entry of water into the water. Now the second one is talking larvae versus fishes. Certain fishes are available to kill the larvae because the larvae are used as their feed. For example, one type of fish, the larvae versus fish. The fishes feeding on larvae are called larvae versus fishes. Gambosia. It is to be introduced into the water bodies like ponds, the draining ditches or any other permanent water bodies. So they can eat the larva. So this is what is called actually biological control method. So introduction of a fish or using one animal to eradicate another animal is called biological method of control. So it is a biocontrol method. It feeds on the larvae. So reducing the development of the larvae into adult form. So the mode of transmission is broken. Now another one also just like spraying oil spraying some preparations. These preparations contain one bacteria, what is called Bacillus thuringiensis. Now it is being used as a biopesticide. You know the meaning of pesticide. A pesticide is the one used for killing a pest. Now the larvae or the mosquito, they are acting as a pest. They should be eradicated by using again a biocontrol method. So Bacillus thuringiensis is a bacteria. It can have the capacity of killing insects, particularly the moth, etc. The same one is also being used as a biopesticide, killing the larvae in water. So this is a third method in order to just break the transmission of the cycle. Either spraying the oil on the water surface, or we can stock in larvae or species in the water bodies, or spraying certain preparations containing a biopesticide in the form of bacteria. Bacillus thuringiensis. It kills the larvae in water bodies. Now we have to see other methods also. We will discuss the first method of prevention of malaria. That is nothing but to break the cycle of transmission by killing the vector. Now the second method adapted is the best protection against malaria. It is to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. People are actually advised not being bitten by mosquitoes. To avoid being bitten by the mosquitoes. How? People are advised to use mosquito nets. Then why gouging the doors and windows? Just screening it. And to prevent the mosquito bites. So it is the best method. While we are keeping away from the mosquito, definitely we are not being attacked by the malarial fever. Now the third method that was developed by what is called the government, National Malaria Eradication Program, NMEP. It was started in 1950s, but it was not successful. What was the reason for that one? Now, the resistant varieties are developed. One, the resistant variety of Plasmodium. Another one, the resistant variety of Mosquito. 
So reason number one due to the resistance of plasmodium. Two drugs. We are using different drugs. What we call is that one captain from that is syngonum bond. That what we can say that is quinine drug. So these are all antibacterial drugs. But you see that one nowadays the resistance developed in plasmodium against these drugs. So due to the resistance of plasmodium to drug to treat it, that was one of the reason why the NMEP was not successful. Another reason due to the resistance of mosquito to the various types of using that one the pesticides. One of the common pesticides normally used to kill the larvae of mosquito DDT. Now resistant varieties again DDT are developed and also other pesticides. So it is a kind of I mentioned already evolutionary process, anthropogenic evolution. So what was the reason? Maybe ask the question. What is the reason the National Malaria Eradication Program is not successful? Two reasons. Resistant variety to what is called plasmodium. Resistant variety to mosquito. These are all the things developed against either what we call that is the drug, antimalaria drug or against what we call the pesticides like DDT respectively. So this is another reason. And one more reason how to prevent what we call the malaria. That is nothing but the vaccination. So the fourth method adapted to prevent malaria, vaccination. But the vaccination is also not so successful because of various reasons. I will tell you the nature of the vaccine, how is it useful to eradicate malaria or to prevent the onset of malaria in the case of people. Method to prevent malaria, that is the fourth method, is vaccination. Vaccine is available against malaria. The recommended vaccine as of 2015 is RTS, s -Vax. Now, the RTS refers to the chemical composition of the vaccine. It contains three components. It contains three components. So R refers to the central repeated, repeated portion of plasmodium falciparum CSP. This is nothing but circumsporozoid protein, the kind of protein just actually surrounding the sporozoid. So central repeated, R for repeat. The T refers to T cell thymocytes, T cell epitopes of CSP. Epitopes we can say the part of the antigen which makes a contact with antibody. We will discuss under immunology. Okay, T refers to T cell epitopes. And then now S refers to hepatitis B surface antigen, otherwise called Australian antigen, normally used against what is called hepatitis B. So these are the different methods. And normally is that one, the surface antigen. Another one what is called T-cell and then what we call the repeated portion of that is plasmodium. So these are the three components present in that what is called the vaccine. That's why RTS refers to what is called actually the chemical composition of the vaccine. But because of its low efficacy, now normally we need four injections. So vaccine requires one to four injections. Normally just like a four injections, though I am writing just one to four but actually four injections. But it is affecting only 25 to 50%. That's why return you see that one low efficacy of 25 to 50%. Because of low efficacy, now the World Health Organization not recommended this vaccine for pregnant women and infants between the age of, you know, 6 to 12 weeks because of low efficacy. That is not effective 100%. That's the meaning for that one. Okay, that's about what we call the vaccine. Now we actually discuss the vaccine. Now RTSS vaccine, the trade name for the vaccine is Muscurix. We also have anti-malarial drugs. The most important anti-malarial natural drug you know quinine. So quinine is the most important anti-malarial drug. This is a natural one. Now we also have synthetic quinine in the form of palmoquine. Chloroquine, pinnaquine, polyurethane. These are the synthetic what is called actually anti malarial drugs. Quinine is a natural anti malarial drug obtained from the bark of singona tree. And we have also 
Synthetic anti-malarial drugs, for example, Paroquine, Primaquine, Penaquine, Chloroquine. So these are all different types of anti-malarial drugs used to treat malaria. So it is not coming into the prevention, but to treat malaria. Okay. Now let us pass on to other protozoan diseases other than what we have discussed so far. Number one, giardiasis. So the constitutive organism is a flagellate intestinal parasite, giardia intestinalis. It was the first protozoan parasite that was known to public. Hence, there is a nickname for that one, Grand Old Man of Intestine. First ever known protozoan parasite. Its most effective causes diarrhea in the case of children. Then another one, Trichomoniasis. There are two species here, Trichomonas bacalis, living in the buccal cavity, causing the disease pyoria. Another one, Trichomonas vaginalis, living in the reproductive organ, in the case of female, and causes sexually transmitted disease. So these are some of the other diseases related to the protozoans. Okay, now we will pause on the next one about the fungal diseases. Next we have to discuss a few words about the fungal diseases. Now normally fungi was recognized as a causative agent to human diseases much earlier than bacteria. A number of actually fungal diseases caused but here we are representing only a few. All the fungal diseases mostly affect the skin. That's why all the fungal diseases together call us dermatomycosis. Mycosis, diseases caused by fungus. Dermatomycosis, diseases affecting the skin caused by fungus. So, dermatomycosis, it is nothing but cutaneous infection. Different types of cutaneous infections caused by fungi. And all these fungi belong to three different genera. Number one, trichophyton. Number two, epidermophyton. And number three, microsporum. So, one way or other, these three genera are involved in causing fungal diseases related to the skin. So, here we are talking about only the skin diseases caused by fungus, hence collectively called dermatomycosis. Now, one of the formal diseases affecting the skin, ringworm. Here it is called ringworm, it is not a bone disease, it is a fungal disease where we have patches appear on any part of the body in the form of circle or round like this. So, having elevated regions, we are getting what's for the patches, you will see in the picture clearly, and that's why it is called a ringworm. So, this is the most common fungal diseases normally found in human beings. Now what are the main symptoms? Dry scaly lesions on the surface of the skin or on the scalp. Scalp is nothing but the skin covering the head. Then also we have the nails. The nails are turning into yellow in color, just a flexible, soft nature. And that is called actually the ring walk in nails. You can find it in the picture also, yellow colored structures. So dry scaly lesions on the skin nails and then scalp. That is about the rainbow. Now what are the conditions favoring the growth of rainbow? The heat and moisture help them to grow and make them to thrive. That is in the skin force. Those skin force normally form in the growing region. Okay? And also the various parts of the body. Mainly the growing region and other parts of the body where you have the skin force present where normally the fungus is normally thriving. That's about what is called the ring bone. The ring bone of what is called the toes or foot is called atlas foot. The ring bone just formed in toes is called atlas foot. It is very common in the case of athletic persons because they are always wearing the shoes that provides warmth and then moist conditions for the growth of the fungus. So these are the two conditions necessary for the fungal growth. When the person is wearing the shoes for a long time, it provides warmth as well as you know that one moisture so that the fungus is growing easily. Now you will see the ring bone formed in what is called the toes, normally called athletes foot. A few sentences about that one. And also how far the fungal disease is being transmitted from one person to another.
Another formal disease arthritis is food, very common in the case of arthritic process. Now, the ring bone in toes is called arthritis foot. This is very common in the case of dimensional only arthritics because they are wearing the shoes that provided warmth and moist content for the growth of the fungus. Now, it is caused by a fungus tinea pipis. Then, another one, candidiasis. It is nothing but a thrush in the mouth, fungal infections in the tongue, oral cavity. It is called candidiasis. It is caused by another fungus called called candida albicans. Okay, so what is the mode of transmission? So, the fungus being transmitted either from the soil or by using the clothes or the towels from infected persons. Such normally particles which transmit the disease are commonly called the fomites. So simply we can say either from soil or through fomites, the fungal diseases are being transmitted. Okay, by using clothes, towels and also we can say the comb, using comb also one of the fomites. So, towels, comb, all are considered as a fomites non-living materials responsible for the transmission of the fungal diseases from, in from infected person to another person.